Hey, what's up guys? This is uh, Mr. Roseland here again. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can save your objects in Java into a file. Um, so normally, if you're going to write something into a file, like let's say I'm working in this program, and it's an example I was working on before, where I made a cake object. And a cake object over here, it's got, you know, all the gets and sets. It's got some constructors for it. It's got some private variables for the color and the flavor, the size, number of layers, and a price. Now, if I was going to, uh, you know, say I want to save that to a text file, okay? I want to save this, this, this cake that I made here. I made a default cake, and then I changed everything to blue and blueberry and all this stuff, right? Let's say I want to save that into a file, okay? What I would normally do is I would go ahead and make a text file, and I would write, you know, write the, the flavor in as, as a line. I write the blueberry in as another line, the number of layers, the price, all that stuff. All those things would be separate lines. And then what I have to do is I have to read each line in, and then hopefully I, I remember to assign them in their correct spot. So I'd have to basically write five lines to the file and then take the, each of those five lines and then set them into the cake. Now that's, that's okay in that situation, but there's an easier way of doing it. You can actually write this cake object itself and just write the whole cake object and read it in in one line. And it'll save all of the data, which is really cool. So how do we do that? So this video here, I'm going to uh, basically, well, I'll just run it, just show you what it, it makes the cake right now. Obviously, that's the way it works, okay? And uh, this video is not about that. This video is all about how to write this thing into a text file. So I'm gonna do it in two parts. So I'm gonna write part one, write the object into the file. So how we do this is we're going to create this thing called an object output stream, okay? And actually, we have to do one other thing too. On the cake, uh, I forgot to mention this, you have to add this thing onto the cake right here. So you have to write public class cake and it implements serializable. You have to add that in. Normally, if you make an object, you don't do that. So this is something else I was working on before. I have a fruit here, public class fruit. You wouldn't put that in there. But because I'm going to write it into an object, you're going to add this uh, line right here, implements serializable. And you're going to have to import this line because of that. It's going to probably go with a red underline right here. And you need to fix the imports and get that uh, as part of your program. So if your object is serializable, like I have here, then we can write it into a, a file, no problem. So here's what we're going to write. We're going to write, um, let's see here, object output stream. And I'm going to write, uh, oops, make a typo here. Write output equals new object output stream, just like that. And inside of here, I'm gonna write new file output stream. And inside of here, I'm gonna put the, the name of the file. So let's call it uh, cakelist.txt, something like that. TXT maybe not, is not the best extension because it's actually not gonna be a text file. Um, let's just, let's call it .dat, just so we don't get confused. Now, it's going to give me some uh, red underline. It doesn't know what these things are. So I have to import them. Right click and then fix the imports. Okay. And now over here, it's, uh, well, I made a typo on that one. But it's going to tell me that there's an IO exception that must be caught or thrown. So whenever you work with files, you have to deal with uh, the IO exception. So what I'm going to do is wrap this with a try and catch. So every time you work with files in Java, you basically have to do this anyways. So try and then catch the IO exception. And then I usually call this thing IOE, but you can call it whatever you'd like here. And I'll just put in a simple error message saying error uh, saving to file, something like that. Now the IO exception, I'm gonna have to import this as well. <clears throat> okay. So there's the first part. So this thing here, this object output stream, what that's gonna do is it's gonna create a new object output stream and it's gonna attach in a file object stream and it's gonna open a file called cakelist.dat. That file does not exist right now, but that's okay, it's gonna make it. So this basically opens the file. Next thing I'm gonna do is actually write it into the file. And to write it, it's actually really simple. You just write output dot and it's write object and whatever you put in the brackets, it'll write that object in. So let's write in cake one, like that. And then we're gonna close it. So we're gonna write output dot close. Always make sure you close your file whenever you're writing to it. 
Okay, so that should work. Um, if I run it right now, let's just see here. It should make that text file. Sorry, it's not a text file, but it should make that file. Uh, let's verify it's there. So this is my cake output example. It is there. It says cakelist.dat. You won't be able to open it. If you try and open it, it's going to tell you it's a binary data, so you can't actually see what's inside of it. Um, yeah, so you can't really see it. It doesn't really look like anything. It's a binary file, okay? So what we need to do now is show you how to read it in. So let's read it in. Part two, read in the object from the file. So if we're gonna read it in, what I'll do is I'll make a second cake object. So right now this one's called cake one, I'll make cake two. And what I'm actually gonna do is set that to null right now. So I'm not gonna make a new cake like I'm doing here. I'm just gonna literally set it to null and I'll show you why in a bit. Because what I'm, what I'm gonna do essentially is read it in from the file and then as long as it's not equal to null, then I'm going to print it out. So yeah, so I'll show you how that works. So we're going to have the same issue to try and catch, but it's a little bit different on the reading one. So for reading, the way we do this thing is we're going to create this thing called an input. Uh, sorry, one sec here. It's an input object stream, I believe. So I don't want to make a typo here, exactly how you write this thing here. Uh, it's an object input stream, sorry. Sometimes I even have to look up this code because I don't have it memorized. So object input stream. So it's the same thing, it's just it's input, right? And let's call this thing input equals new object input stream. And we're gonna put new file input stream. Okay, and right here we're gonna we're gonna make sure we tie in the same file. So cake list.dat. So exactly the same. Make sure you open the same file, otherwise you're gonna get a problem. Now we've got to fix some imports again. We gotta import those things. And we got the same issue, we got the IO exception problem. So we're gonna write try, and then we're gonna say catch IO exception, IOE, and then we're gonna write system.err.println error opening file. Okay. Now that is still not going to fix it, I believe. I think we're, I think there's going to be another error that's going to come up, but uh, you'll see when that comes. Okay, so right now we got this object input stream. So this is basically opening the file. Now to read it, we're going to write this. We're going to write cake two equals input dot read object. And in front of this, what I have to put is I have to put bracket cake like that. So what this does is when you write input.read object, it reads whatever the object in it is that's stored in that file, it'll read it in, okay? But it doesn't know what that file is. It doesn't know what the object is. It doesn't understand that it's a cake. It could be a string. It could be any kind of an object. It doesn't know, right? So what you have to do is you have to put bracket cake in front of it. And what that'll do is it's going to cast it. It's going to convert whatever that object is, and it's going to force it to become a cake object. Um, so this is the step that you have to take because like I said, when you read in an object, it doesn't know what type of object it is. So that's why you write cake in front in order to actually force it to become a cake. Now here's the second error I was talking about. This is in red right here. It says there's an unreported exception called class not found exception. This has to be caught or declared if you're going to use this line. So it's just like we have in the catch here for the IO exception. I'm going to make a second catch actually. You can write catch. And it says it's a class not found exception. Class not found exception. And I'll just call that to, uh, C N F E. And I'm just gonna write error again. Uh, object red is not a cake. Something like that. Okay, so that's, ex that's literally what's gonna happen in this error. If it reads in an object, and let's say for example, it's not a cake, let's say it's a string or it's something else, okay? Then what'll happen is you're gonna get an actual error and it's gonna be a class not found exception and it's gonna fail, it's gonna go right here. So that actually should work. That will actually read in the cake and then we're gonna close in our file. So input.close, just like that. Now be careful when you read stuff like this in 
You want to actually have this line outside the try and the catch. If you have it inside, then what will happen is later on when you try and print it out, print out the red in cake, it's not going to work. Like if you, if you have this line right here, and then you try and print out cake two, okay, it's not going to like it because it says it can't find it. Okay, it's because of variable scope. So right now, because I made it inside the try, it's only visible inside the try. So if you start it outside the try, so create your variable here, and then fill it in inside the, the, uh, uh, the try, then it will work. Now, if I print it right now, this should actually work. Let's find out. I'm just going to put in a little thing here first, just showing you this is cake two. Put a bunch of dashes or something to separate it. So I'm printing out cake two, and cake two was read from the file. Cake one is my original one up here. So it sh they should both look the same because they're the same exact object. And it works. So there's cake one, and there's cake two. So it read it in, which is really cool. So it read it in in one line, and it retained all of its variables, which is super useful. So even if you had a really, really complex object with like array lists inside of it and all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, if you uh, implement serializable, you could write it in one line and then read it in one line, which makes life really, really nice later on. Okay. Now be very careful. Um, right now I have, you know, I'm printing out cake two. you know, your program, if you want to really make it bulletproof, you know, it could crash. It could actually fail here. And for some reason, the kick two is actually null and it tries to print out here. So you can do things like this if you want. This is probably a good practice. If you set the cake to null right at the top here, you can actually just double check it and just say, if cake two is not equal to null, then print it out. So it's, it's an error guard you don't necessarily have to use all the time, but it's probably worth your while doing that because if it's still a null, like right now it starts off as a null right here, if it's still null, that means it didn't read properly. If it didn't read properly, you might have a crash here or it might give an error when you try and print it. So it's a good idea to error guard your programs anyways, and that's something that I would actually do, okay? So again, this is a quick video showing you what serializable does, and how you can read and write your objects in one line of code um, and get this working perfectly.